this is the official assignment Tuesday assignment and the reason why I picked it because it's a nice metal texture and I think this is challenging enough to anyone that is interested in doing that. This is going to be an outline type of situation to get the inner. Ooh, this is even smaller than I thought. Ah, you know what? I could keep that, keep that size. That would be enough. Cool. Denny, to answer your question about the metal texture, it's going to be extremely challenging and it's going to be extremely annoying. I need to do that this way. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Yeah, you can't see much when it's in black and white. So in order to achieve the thing that we need to achieve, it's going to be a matter of this and then duplicating that many times. The issue that I have with with the noise plugin is that it generates an image. If I'm using an image to create the texture, am I really doing anything? I can feel Figma crying already. Now that we have all of our circles, I need to select the first one, which is supposed to be this one. I will group them into one frame that I can just play around. The main reason for that is because now that we have this one, add them or five in terms of all of the lines inside of it, they are going to be switched from O5 inside to O2 centered and then duplicate all of these to be O3 inside and again O4 outside. That will create weird things that will give you the texture. It's going to be extremely heavy on Figma and right now it's just a transparent color. We need to create that radio gradient that needs to be added to each of them. So that's going to be hard. That gives us these technically. So now I have my outers. God damn it outers right here which I'm gonna do at all and they are closer here I'm gonna check my inners I think I'm gonna do a 0.4 as well I could do a 0.5 technically but like, the idea is to just get the smallest amount of shit because when you are going to pixelate it's just going to recreate shit in the middle okay so that I can pick one up and just mess everything up let's add that to the top of our layers and then this is gonna be black add, and then in order to get that inset version it's gonna going to be somewhere around the 20% opacity, 10% opacity thing. Maybe because of that thing right here, potentially could work, but that's debatable. So we need an effect that is going to be one pixel and a half of drop shadow, which is going to be white, no blur. So that's probably 0.5 of blur, pure white, one in Y. All right, so it highlights the bottom right here and the top. We will have a need for a bit of a highlight right there. I'll see what I can do. And then we need the same thing, duplicate it, but Instead of white, it's going to be black and it's going to be an inner shadow. I need to do this as well. Sorry, I forgot about that. You see how slow this is? God damn it. This is going to be good. Centered, almost to 20. We say four. I think four would be good, but then I need that. Cool. And then on top of that, on top of that is going to be way less. I think it's going to be at six. Four, two. It's the same situation as last time where they need to be closer and wider at the same time for some reason. But I also think I can get away with not doing that so we're gonna do just that that's the thing i have a doubt on these if i want them to start right here i need a i need the thing to start right there when i do that they offset themselves at least we have that sugar fatty i got a nice knob yeah well come on in. it's a red knob for now we're gonna need to change some things here and there ah that's what's happening all right cool Get rid of that for now okay i think i have most of the thing that i need uh i also need that color as a base and now I need to get rid of these. Let's hide these and let's make sure that this is going to go in. It's a light gray type of situation for this with a gradient that goes from that to that. That happens around here because we get an inner shadow is massive and really black in it. Yeah, somehow something like this that directly center is going to be these. And then we're supposed to have one of the lighter color that goes in with the lighter color, right? Something like this, kind of. And then on the other side, we have the same shit around here. Okay, that's going to be around here. Oh, uh, no, it's not made in Figma. This is made in, as far as I remember, this is an old one. Yeah, 2012, Figma didn't exist. But it's Vector, so it's not even Photoshop. It, it's even worse. I mean, they did a great job. It's sad that I don't have a better render of this thing to see the details and how they did it. But, you know, these two are going to be not that right and then that's gonna be the same i want to brighten up these that seems okay we're gonna have the same issue as last time but that's a detail for now these ones though are supposed to be a bit lighter ish no 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 
made by someone else and if someone else made it it means i can do it as well that's that's the goal every time i feel like we need that for transition okay that's roughly good we still need to have the outline and that outline is going to be pure white with a weird linear gradient that goes from color to no color if you look closely you have the highlight right here and then you have an highlight ish at the bottom so this one is going to be a bit lighter but still highlighted so i'm guessing 50 percent it's going to probably do the trick ish seems 50 percent is a bit bright and i could make it overlay so that it takes on the color of the knob itself can try that cool now i'm gonna duplicate it and we're gonna render it in not gray meaning i just want the white to do the highlights and once again i wish i could pick through that color and just be good anyways now that we have that we're going to select the angular gradient copy it and paste it to each of these once that's done we can now remove the stroke and invert the feel and the stroke so now technically when you look at it you have these effect that happens because of the placement and all that it's a very subtle thing i'm gonna take my number one and i'm gonna randomly select some things in there now that i have a random amount of things selected i'm gonna rotate them by four degrees which creates these lines that are offset to highlight more or less parts of the brushed aluminum and you do that plenty of times in plenty of directions all right cool one of the benefits that we have because i kept the grays is that now i can just go in and revive these colors to get the same effect what do you see on stream you feel like it's too strong it's not scuffed you make a good point stony i'm gonna squish one of the set of course to combine them into moons crescents type of things it's still too perfect i do agree with that that is better so smoothing the transition makes it a bit easier to see i should be able to use that i can blur some blobs here and there that might help could help and then i could 100 lighten or screen that this one is kind of neat though that feels okay i don't like the color but i think the colors are coming from the fact that this are on different version of overlays type of situation rather than and also it's more blue figma is, is figuring out that the figma lagger being on is gonna break everything so let me just disable that and i can move the thing at a reasonable rate and let's change the led placement to be kind of ish aligned good the pixelated version is much better but yeah why figma lagger because there is three times a hundred and something lines in different format with different rotation with effects added to them and blending modes that's much better such a small detail that makes no sense to be honest 1.5 in the outer feels like a better option i feel like if i make this a bit more blue might be better it looks blue it's more metallic like a cold metal yeah i don't like the led the main reason why it's bothering me really is the fact that it's it used to be it used to be fine like you you used to be the ability to do all of these things without having figma lag and now when you have three effects and a hundred layers it starts to freak out for no reason the tad better it's fun to see how flat and textured change everything i would use that in a ui thing to make a project and i would use that in the advertisement material but yeah i think that's enough i think that's enough for these